All right. You guys, welcome to another episode of Leave It on the Line, where I am I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this guest. I know I say that a lot, but uh, in this series, Leave It on the Line, we take an in-depth look at what it takes to make it in this business and all the realms of that business. And, you know, we all come from different walks of life, so we all experience different things, and we all have a calling. And... I think, you know, ECO is the brand that finds you guys and will be what's underneath your chef coats when you go to work and on your back when you're off. So I am Chef Jojo Doyle with the uh, Extreme Culinary Outfitters, and it's such an awesome pleasure to introduce Carlos Garcia, the man, the myth, the legend, the creator of Lost Car Chef Coats Apparel. Like, just one of my favorite coats I've ever put on my back. All my boys and I at work all wear it, and... You know, for those of you guys who don't know, Carlos and I go back probably to very close to the beginning of almost Lost the, Car. Almost to the inception. Almost yes. to the inception, for sure. And I know you guys probably know Carlos better than you probably, maybe even know ECO. They're like, that's that's <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Like, I feel like you're such a, uh, a role model and a leader in the industry. Um, for those of you that, I know I'm, I'm bragging about you before we even get started, but for those of you that do not know Carlos, take a moment. Carlos, introduce yourself and kind of tell us what uh, Lost Car is. Hey guys, Carlos Garcia. I own a uh, owner founder of Lost Car Chef Apparel. Was a chef for 21 years before I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way, a better looking coat, and uh, a better way to get it. So I, I took the leap of going from cooking into designing apparel, which was crazy, and then opening <laughs> up an embroidery business as well which is even crazier. But, you know, as a chef, I, I just knew that it could be done. Now, like, um, for me, I think it's, uh, like, that you're such an, an uh, you're such a hybrid of, like, you're everything that I would want to be. And, <laughs> you know, like, from a standpoint of making the leap of faith and mm -hmm. having a product that people believe in, it, I mean, like, people know Lost Car. Like, I think I was looking at a TV show, and I was like, oh, my God, that guy's wearing Lost Car right now. I, I travel so much, and then sometimes I'm at these uh, these U.S. food shows or just these regular food shows, and somebody, somebody will walk in. No joke. This happened in South Carolina about a month ago. And I was looking, and some guy walked in, and I'm like, that's a nice-looking jacket. Like, it was <laughs> a good-looking jacket. And... He got cl a little closer to me, and I thought to myself, we got to make a jacket that color. So as he was getting closer, it was one of our original jackets four years ago that had just been washed and worn, and it was like good denim jeans. Yes. And it wasn't yes. black any longer. It was like a light gray. Yes. Because yeah, it had faded like, so much. Yes. So sometimes it's, it's amazing like for me to be able to see our product out there in – the East Coast, you know, completely on the other side of the country. And to have such a fan following, and we call them super fans. We have a ton of them that have believed in us since the beginning. And, and in all honesty, the reason why we're still open, the reason why I could still answer my cell phone is because of these super fans. You know, the way they talk about us, the way that they believe in the, the brand, and it's amazing. The When, 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 when we met, like, like, so for uh, backstory, I... Quit my job at Churchill, leave a uh, company I've been with for a while, come out and open a F and b project at the Honda Center. ECO has been with me since 2010. You know, I come out to California, I meet some people, and um, a chef from Melissa's uh, produce company, if you guys haven't heard them, you know, heard of them. Mm -hmm. Marco sends Marco me an Zapian. email. Yep. Marco Zapian sends me an email. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I got a friend of mine that's started this chef coat company. I really think you need to check it out. And I think it was like two days later, you were in the parking lot in a food truck decked out with chef coats on it. We did. And we it did. was it was such a um, amazing experience because when I stepped on this, I stepped into a food truck, but I felt like I was at a tailor. That's what we started. You know, it was um, it was my way of trying to figure out how, cause chefs. You all know you're listening to this because you guys are all in the industry and. You know, you know that there's never time. And if you're lucky enough and you only work one job, then your off time is spent with your family, sleeping, working out or whatever. But so many people in the industry have two jobs. So I needed to figure out a way, instead of opening up a brick and mortar, 
I needed to figure out a way to 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 come to the chef. So my first truck was a, a Osco linen truck, and I bought it for eighteen thousand bucks, and that was almost all my savings. And then we, um, I quit my job on Mother's Day. With Mother's Day, two thousand fourteen, was my last day, and I spent two months, July fourteenth, two thousand fourteen. We rolled out, and that- I did that truck with hardwood floors. Oh, I, I three dimensional ceiling, TV. It was a, it, a totally a legit experience. Like it was, <laughs> I stepped on. I was like, oh my god, I need to step up my game. This is it was just like, and then, and then you put the co- the way that you put the coat on us, mm-hmm. and it was you and your sister, and then Leo, who is Leo our was there master too. embroidery. Yeah, because we had the the, the ten thousand dollar embroidery machine on that on truck. the truck, and it was like, okay, what do you want your name to be? You Let's know, do it like, right there. Let me do it right here, yeah. and I was like, this is amazing. It, wait, wait. That's what we wanted to convey to the chef. That's what we wanted to convey to anybody who wanted to be part of the Lost Car Army is what we call it. We wanted you to have that experience where you walk on, air conditions on, it's clean, it looks good, you can get your coat fitted, plus get embroidered right on the spot, walk off within 20 minutes of having a brand new coat instead of the two to four week experience. Like so you, you, you gave us the coats, like, I mean, we, we ran, we all got one of each. Right. It was like, and we were super excited yeah. about it, and it was, it was, a, it was an experience. Mm-hmm. And, and the things that were, were awesome was, in the early days, it was a 20-minute visit or an hour visit to places like yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And people would always ask me, like, what's the minimum? Like, what do we need to get you to come to visit us? And I would say one coat. That's it. One sale. And we would drive. It, it's, it sounds, I don't, it I don't sounds, even know how you did it. It sounds ridiculous because we were going from Temecula, which is, you know, was 100 miles away from where our home base is at, uh-huh. to Santa Monica on the and 100 same miles day. in our world could be two days in traffic. You know, like, well, I, I know I'm exaggerating. No, no, but, but like, you're right. Like, but it's, think about it's it on 65 a, miles from here to Temecula, and I'm further south than HB. Right, right. And then. But think about like, it on I gotta a go food up truck. And around. But in a food truck, get think out of town. Yeah. So we were running trucks. I mean, we were losing money left and right. But what we did was we 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 built the business based on that rolling, um, big sign. You know, we had our we have our logo on the side of it. <laughs> and then we opened. And then I bought another one. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. You know? I remember. I remember when. Oh, I remember when both trucks were in the parking lot at Honda Center. <laughs> what a great! That's I have a picture of that. That's, that's I guess yeah. I still have it. I mean, I mean, all all you know. I, I think we have to be completely transparent. I mean, uh, from all all tents and purses, as my ignorant ass would say, all tents and purses, and um, we've been friends and sort of we've kind of exchanged. Uh, We've kind of done business together. You've sold some yeah. of our product on the on the truck. Yep. We've uh, we actually our first apron that we ever did was like a co brand, right? You know, like yeah. our first apron with the extreme coming down the side. And you know, no matter what business we've been through, we've always been really good friends. And I don't like the connection has always been kind of uh, unique to me. Like when you showed up at the truck, I was like, oh my god, this guy gets it. Mm-hmm. And it was like you saw something that the market needed. But you also had this amazing passion for finding chefs and getting. You're like, I want you to look as good as you work. Right. So as good as your food, I want you to look that good when you put my coat on. And you know why everybody loves. And and like I remember when you put the coat on, and I was like, man, I love the way this coat feels. And you're like, I designed it to kind of fit like a uh, baseball jersey. That's like right. A jersey. That's right. And I was like, man, it's it's really, it's really nice. And you're like, thank you. Mm-hmm. I you know I want you to. I want you to feel like a million dollars when right. you put this coat on. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't even let us try it on. You put it on us. And it was like this. It was a very amazing experience. And the struggle, like, you know, I know <laughs> I know what it costs to make a, a chef coat. I know what it costs to make an apron. I know what it costs right. to drive a food truck, mm-hmm. to spend an hour. Like, you were in our parking lot for an hour and a half, too. Of course, I talk a lot, you know, hence a podcast. But, <laughs> you know... To be where you are now, where you're traveling the country, Mm -hmm. you could turn on Food Network, you could turn on any type of show, and there's a good chance somebody's going to be, you're going to see your coat. Yeah. And you started out 
as a chef 21 years ago. Right. Or probably, well, 26 19, years ago. It was 1993, I believe. 1994. How'd you, how did you find yourself... Okay, did you always know you wanted to be a chef? No. There's one, there's one reason. I, I had to become a cook. And it was because... And it's not a bad reason, but it's just the way that I've always lived. I got the, my girlfriend at 19 years old, pregnant. And I was working as a server at Olive Garden. Okay. And I needed to have more of a stud, steady income. Okay. And working as a server, you know, getting cut after two hours or three hours, that wasn't going to cut it for me. Like, I had to go from being right out of high school to being a dad. And so what I did was I talked to the manager and I said, can I, come, can I start cooking? Because I knew at that point I could have an you know eight or six or eight hour shift at that point, and I think I think my minimum wage at that point was like four twenty five an hour, but I knew it was <laughs> I wasn't gonna get cut. I knew that I can excel at cooking because I I mean growing up in a, in, in a Hispanic family, there's passion or the passion was already there. Right. Working into working in an Italian restaurant per se Olive Garden. Um, it, it just gave me the opportunity to know that every week I would come home with this much money. Right. There wasn't going to be any flex or, you know. <laughs> so Yeah, like you, you left the server job, which, you know, most people would be like, you're crazy. You're crazy <laughs> for doing that. Yeah. And then you're like, I need something that's steady. Yeah, I, I had to do that. And How long did you work at Olive Garden? I worked there for about, I think, two years. I excelled, though. Oh, I didn't, of course. I, didn't, I, didn't, right? like I was on saute driven. in the beginning, and then I went right to the window, and I started expediting, and that's what just killed it for me. What I, what I learned at that point in my life, in my career as a cook, was being able to control what I thought other people would think was chaos. And I know any good cook or any good chef knows what I'm talking about. To be able to have a window full of food coming up. Mm-hmm. And to be able to control that and to get it out to the customers. Like that still, to this day, even though I'm doing what I'm doing now, I still I still long for that. Right. It, it, it's that adrenaline junkie, whatever we are. However, all chefs and cooks are built, like there is that adrenaline junkie. Do you do you think that there's this one I I guess this one thread? of similarity that we all share as cooks and chefs? I, I think there absolutely absolutely is, and I think it kind of spans with other genres as well with your career. But I think it's the, you know, you got to know you're going to stand up all day. you <laughs> right. got you got to know that. you got to know that you're never going to see your family, and that's not a bad thing. But you know that there is, let's say, you know, 100 million cooks in the United States but there's only a million restaurants. So how do you get yourself to be running one of those, right? Do you open one? Do you just go crazy and just be the best you can be? And then if you want to be that TV personality, there's six. Yeah. So when it comes to, I think, that the one thread that we all have or that people that, that are in this industry have is a, a very competitive nature about them. You yeah. know? Yeah, for the, sure. The good ones. The good ones. The ones that I think... The ones the if you're not competitive or if you're not pushing, I think if you don't have drive, right, you're it the industry's not gonna really treat you well and you're not gonna feel treated well. You won't feel treated well at all. You you won't I don't think you'll make it. Right. But I I will say this, Chef, is that when I was working at the Anaheim Angels, there was two cooks that were the best cooks, you know? And then I had one dishwasher who wasn't a dishwasher. Like, this guy was a professional dishwasher. This guy came in, looked proper. He went to work when when his shift started, and this guy busted butt until the minute his shift ended. And we all need those people, and I think those people need to be respected just as much as your top number one chefs. I I would agree. For the longest time, most of my dishwashers got paid more than the cooks. (laughs) <laughs> because that's that's where we stood from a standpoint of like that's really smart honestly that's a great that's a great thinking yeah like that's that was something that I stood by for a, a long time I mean we I mean it's something that 
I didn't wash a lot of dishes until mm-hmm. I became a chef. <laughs> like, like I, 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 I always wanted to be a chef, and then all of a sudden, um, I became the guy who was in charge. Yeah. And then you know, somebody's uh, a dishwasher would get sick, right. or like, and, and they call who's out. Who's gonna do that? Yeah. And who's gonna do that? Well, the only person that could leave the line, like the only person that could do it, was me. Right. Really. Right. So like, I ended up doing more dishes as the chef than I did as the line cook or mm-hmm. the grill guy, or the saute guy. And I was like, holy shit! But let me this- ask you a question. Did you learn how to put the dishes in like a deck of cards? Oh, <laughs> come dude, on, come on, come on. Like, there's not, I mean, first off, you, you're you going to have to do it better and faster than anybody, right? You have because, to because everybody watching. Because they're like, oh, is the chef going to do dishes? Mm-hmm. Oh, is, how is he going to do the dishes? Do they <laughs> suck or is like he going to take forever? Yeah. And, you know, and everybody's watching you, you know? And, yeah. And I think that, you know, I loved it. Why? Because it was almost like an escape for that like four hours, Give right? Five. Today's actually the ha- National High Five Day, <laughs> just so you know. Like, but we, like it was like oh it my was, god, it was it was, <laughs> and then, like you're, oh, you know you get everything and then you like throw it in, you know, bam, yeah. drop it, <laughs> and then you're like and you're and like happy you, and you got like this little plastic thing yeah, on yeah, and yeah, you're like yeah. oh oh no you guys check that in I'm just washing dishes yeah, yeah keep cooking yeah keep cooking don't look at me don't don't bother me like right we now. talked we talked a little bit before we started the podcast but. The one thing I've been saying is, it, 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 it's come to fruition, is you could chase me, but you won't catch me. I'm telling you, and I love that. If you guys, I mean, I, you got to throw out, like, we're going to throw out several times, but on social media, yeah. it's lost. Lostcarschef.com, or Lost Car Chef is our business. And right. I'm... And- but you on Instagram, I'm loving right now. Like your Thank stories you. are killing me. Like <laughs> I watch your stories like twice. I'm stalking you. And that's Lost Car <laughs> dot, dot Los. Los. Yeah. And just so we all know, Lost Car comes not from a lost car. It comes from my name. It's it's my name backwards. It's yes. or, or split in half and and, and, and then switch. And switch. And it's yeah. a Volkswagen because that was your first car. That was so the green Volkswagen was my first car that was given to me. By my one of my heroes in my life, I got three. I got my grandfather, mm-hmm. I got my mom, and I got my dad. My grandfather gave me that car, and I and I told everything that is built around my business. There's a reason. The name. There's. I have three children. I have Carly, C A R. I have Carson, C A R, and I have Carter, C A R. So my whole goal was. I didn't know that. To in the event that Lost Car continues to shoot to the moon. And, you know, I'm old and gray one day, and, and maybe one of my, my boys wants to take over. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's one rule. You can't ever work for me until you work five years on the line. You could be a dishwasher. You could be a line cook. But you have to show me that you have excelled because you've got to be able to talk the talk. And it has to be within – you have to have, you know, at least five years' experience for you to come and work with me to know why we do what we do, why we hustle the way we do. So – the, the name Lost Car is very meaningful to me because there's, I, free, I love that. It, it's the, I love it's that. my three children have half the name in it. And I would always want them to be able to say, you know, I, I run this company, half of my name's in it, or, and it's, it's based off of my father's name, you know? Yes. And then, and then the little Volkswagen bug, come on, how, how can you lose? <laughs> no, you can't. And you know what's funny is like when, um, when I founded ECO, mm-hmm. It's Extreme Culinary Outfitters, right? And everybody's like, well, that's a really long name, right? And I, I felt like what we do in our business is always extreme, yeah, right? Yeah. And I wanted to be an outfitter for the culinary brand, right? right? And, dude, when I started this, like, everybody's wearing tap out. And, like, I'm a huge UFC guy. And I'm like, this is, this is kind of like the way I feel about our business. We need something to tie on to. And mm-hmm. there's nothing in our business it's not a little bit extreme right the way that we work the way that we party the way that we are you know use sharp knives yeah like fire (laughs) knives right but like i love the abbreviation Uh because when i was younger i had a company with my father that was called esi and for me i was like if i go eco it's very symbolic for me in that same standpoint, right? right? right. You're like, it yeah. ties back, and I'm paying homage to a guy that, you know, that I think worked his butt off and did all this, you know, crazy stuff to provide for us. Absolutely. And you're like, you know, when I hear your story about uh, Lost Car, because when I was like, what's what's the deal with Lost Car? Hold on, let me tell you, I, mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm going to. We had a Facebook message sent. I was on the 405. It was 
July whatever, 2015. Okay, so we had already been open one year, whole year. It was hot. My air condition had gone out in the in this food uh. truck. Okay, we're driving. There's traffic. I'm just thinking to myself, what the hell am I doing? Okay, right. So I got a call from my sister who runs my company, Jennifer. Oops. Watch the springs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my sister Jennifer Garcia or Perez, who who runs my company, when you know when I'm not in there, um, she said, "Don't look on Facebook," and I said, "Why?" Like you just told me to look on Facebook. But yeah, that, it's a <laughs> so there's this girl who's driving on the 405 behind me who feels the need to send a message on Facebook saying that it's th- she's a marketing director, and it's the worst name for a chef apparel company ever. And she laid into me like what? she like who hurt you? Like why are you mad right now? Did, did I cut you off? I mean, we had this long post about. How stupid and horrible the whoever came up with this, right? So I'm just like, you can't. I'm, I'm like kind of dumbfounded yeah. that they spent that much time on it. That's, well, I that, guess it's the end. That's what. I, that, well, wait, what year was this? 2015. 2015. Jesus so what Christ. I'm saying is like, when you pay homage to something, mm-hmm. it doesn't. It doesn't matter that you remember from when you were a kid, right? Right. You're thinking about food that you loved or. I mean that's that's what you do. You you think about back in the day, and you know my my favorite meal, my de- my the day that I die, I hope that I get a sloppy Joe, that's made from my mom. Now does she does she use like she makes it from scratch? No, or does, does no. she use the man. I'm talking about man in the in the can and ground beef Ooh, with with a forty what? cent bun that you that, that that's my that, dream dying it, meal. Okay? I like it. I so, mean, you're, you're you're right up my alley right now. I'm just telling you. So when you come up with your echo, you know, and and you're paying homage, and people ask me like, well, why did you name it that way? Well, because you're asking me why. So yeah. let let me tell you why. So I've told this story a thousand times, and every time I tell the story, people don't care anymore. I didn't want to call it another chef apparel, chef wear, chef works, uh, new chef. Like, come on, mm-hmm. there was something that was different that I needed to make meaningful, to give me all the umph. That I needed to try to make this successful, dude. I, when you told me the story, and I was like, I'll never. I like, I've still not forgotten listening to the story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just like, damn, that it resonates because I, you're, there's a couple. There, there's one thing that you're definitely not. And it's not fake. No. And then when you <laughs> sit down and like when you talk about your passion, you're one. You 100 percent connect with people. And I think that's that's so hard to do nowadays, especially because um, everybody's always just looking for some sort of angle, right. you know. Yeah. And I, for me, when 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 you're like, "This is why I did it," and it came from such a spot because you're like, "I wanted us to," I wanted us to wear a coat. And see, I sit in a lot of, I I mean, I, I sit in a lot of board meetings. Sure. That's like, that's the job that you get when you start to run a team of like 800 people, right? <laughs> right. You're no longer working the line. Right. And I I feel like I could wear your chef coat in any environment, any board meeting. Mm-hmm. And you know, especially the OG coat that I have. Yeah. You know, that has the the pimp collar right. and the long sleeves and they're folded up and they and I was like this and I, when I wore those to the meetings, people would be like that's an amazing like that's a chef coat. Mm-hmm. That is so nice. We just redid that yesterday. So yesterday, I delivered to the new um, soccer team in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Fo- um, Los Angeles Football Club. They, okay. They just can't. He wanted that coat, but he wanted it a, not denim. He didn't want to pay that kind of money. Um, so we came out with a a coat that is poly cotton. It mm-hmm. doesn't shrink. And it was a killer coat. So if you guys want to see it, you guys got to go online to our social media and you can take a look at how amazing. Oh, what's this one called? It's only for him. Oh, it's only one. You only made one? or No, you we like... made a ton. A ton. So what's the name of it? Because you always have these names like Frank 3.0. And... Well, we didn't. That's called the LAFC coat. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. So I don't, when you go I don't... to Lost, lostcarchefapparel.com. You and... won't see it there because it's, it's only, only made for, it's for legends. Yeah. Oh, so it's only Legends for them. is doing some they, amazing stuff. Man. Yeah, they're doing, doing it. Good stuff, they're yeah. doing it. I've yeah. got my uh, a really good friend of mine um, is the one the in charge of their purchasing. 
uh, Mr. Barbarino. I've right. done a lot of derbies with that man. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you know when you do the when you when you do the big events, you can, it's a very small circle. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of chefs that have the experience of the major crazy events. I mean, you know, you you worked at Angels. There's only a few. Well, I didn't. Well, you you also know that I also ran the. The, where you work, the Honda Center, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you did. You did. Three, for like, three I, years. I did not. I, I knew that you were there, <laughs> but I, I like I always forget that for some reason. Because yeah. you come in, you're like, I know exactly where you are. Now, it's cool because part of the reason why I think our company as well has been so just amazing is that Gretchen. So Gretchen, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember her last name. It's kind of a long last name, but um, she runs Legends. So she was actually in your position as well. She, mm-hmm. she ran Honda Center for, I think, a couple of years after yeah. I, I left. And now she's putting me in all these, uh, introducing me to all these amazing chefs in all these big arenas and stadiums. That's and, awesome. Like, how does this happen? Three well, and a half, almost four years later. How, how am I in, like, all these amazing places? I just saw you in an L.A. Dodgers shirt the <laughs> other day, too, on Insta. Yeah, that's... Uh, Is that happening as well? I'm pushing. You're pushing? pushing? Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I think that's what it's about. Now, if we... Let's digress a little bit. Yep. You went from Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. Now, where did you go from Olive Garden? Gosh, I went to my first real job. What was that? I'm embarrassed to say, but I'll say it. Oh. And I'll say it because I was... Well, this is leave it on the line. This is <laughs> like, we're, we're, we're diving deep. Everything that's done you're right, from here, you're right. we, because it's and, like, and, you're, and you're and leaving I, it I here. tell people, like, I, you know, I'm honest. It's, it's on my social media. It's, you'll know. So I went from Olive Garden to this new place that was opening up called Hometown Buffet. And oh, but that's that's OT. You're going to get overtime if it was brand new opener, right? No. No? 24,000 bucks a year. Oh, 16 brutal. hours a day, 7 days a week, open to one in Bell as the assistant kitchen manager. So I I kind of came off the line a little bit, uh-huh. but I was still in the kitchen. Um, how oh, you just got brutalized there. I can't even imagine. <laughs> you, that's where bad things started happening. That's, <laughs> that's where, you know, the, uh, the, my, the abuse, you could say, that I did to my body started happening because of the amount of hours. And I was, you know, missing my daughter. And I was j- we were getting brutalized. And they were doing, we were doing 3,000 covers a day. Mm-hmm. And then on Sundays, when we opened up for breakfast, we were doing like 6,000, 6, like 200 a day. So I would have to go. I'd, the, the, the kitchen manager would have to be there to open. Mm-hmm. I would get there at ten, and I would close at midnight. And it was, in the, you know, it was it was three months of that. So I told myself, I'm not doing this. Like I got to get to the point where I can come in at six a.m. and then leave at six, so that at least I could see my daughter when she's awake. Right. And I did that. I I, I ended up becoming. I ended up opening seven um, seven stores for them, and I was the first, or was, I was the youngest kitchen manager at 22 years old. I started at 20. Uh, it took me two years to get to becoming the kitchen manager that was right underneath the general manager level. And I went from like 24000 to back then, it was 1998, I think, I, or 97, I, it was, I made like 55000 Boom. But, big, big baller. <laughs> <laughs> big baller. People have, people have told me, like, as long as you're making like your, your age. So if you're 50 or yeah. you're, you know, I was 22, so I was making 55 Plus Still, bonus. Did you have any money like flowing anywhere? Probably not, right? No, no. no. That's, <laughs> you spend what you make. Yeah. I think. So that's. I went from there to. Um, I left there really beat up. But the thing that that place told me was inventory control mm-hmm. and how to run big numbers because we were doing, I think, one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand bucks a week out of these cranking. out of these cranking and to be able to run inventory control. And and keep a clean kitchen and run a you know forty person staff at that point. Right. At twenty four when I left, that was it, that was invaluable. Like that was that was better than ever going to a culinary school, which I never did. You know. Yeah. You don't you don't learn that at culinary school. You don't no. learn to open the doors to a line of four hundred people every day. You know until you do that. So people. Give me a hard time about the fact that I worked at that place, mm-hmm. but I explained that it, it was completely necessary for me because I left there and I opened up. I and I, I opened up a, a restaurant in Whittier as the executive chef because I knew what I, I needed to do. Right, and then from there I went to the Anaheim Angels, mm-hmm. um, where we were doing 
720 covers in an hour and a half. Yeah. And had the best time of my life. That was the best job I've ever had as far as that rush, you know, getting to work at 9 o'clock in the morning. Game starts at 7, 10. We open doors at 5 o'clock, and between 5 and 7, you're doing 700 covers. I mean, I ran, I ran a menu that was unheard of at that time in 2001 to 2004. You don't do chili rellenos to order when you're pushing money or we were pushing food out that fast. You don't do, you know, I was, we were doing walk stuff and, and, and I just, I had no limit. Right. You know, I just was like, this isn't done in stadiums, so I'm going to do it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That man, that, that's like, when did you start in arenas and stadiums? 2001? 2000, 2004? 2000. 2000. Yeah. Okay. I made my transition over to arenas in, I think, 2004, 2003, 2004. And I, I, I haven't looked back. I, I like it. I like it. I think it. Now, you, I, do you, I don't think you should feel bad for working at Hometown Buffet. No, I don't anymore. I just, sometimes I tell people because I ended up being in a, in a four-star, running a four-star hotel, right? Mm -hmm. Fine dining, four-star, super classy place. So people don't get that. When I, when I, you know, when people ask me my story and I tell them, you know, oh, well, what culinary school did you go to? I didn't. You know, I, I tell him I was I was homegrown. Yeah, school I, of hard knocks had to be because, like I like my explained earlier, you know, my 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 situation with getting my girlfriend pregnant and having to step up as a man. Well, I mean, when there's been many a times when people come in and they're like, "I've the only place," you know, like I want to be a cook, and they're like, "I said, well, you know," and they have a list of places that they worked, and like, if it's Burger King, McDonald's, or Taco Bell for a long time, like t I'm like, you're hired. Mm -hmm. Consistency, and and, th and they're like. And we had a list of people that were coming in at one one job I had, and the guy like worked at McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, and then I was like, "What'd you do?" And he's like, oh, "I worked in the back and I made all the sandwiches and stuff." Mm. And I was like, "What time did you work?" And he's like, "Oh, I always worked the lunch shift." And I was like, "Really? Okay. Um, what do you want to learn?" And that's all. I didn't care about anything else right. anymore. When when do you want to start working, and mm -hmm. what do you want to learn? Mm -hmm. Because I already know that you can look at a monitor, look at a ticket, same thing, and crank out. 500 different type of items in an hour because you're like no mayonnaise no pickles no onions okay what's the difference in that no sauce no you know croutons on the side yeah. you're you're already used to this fast pace that and and then if you're doing that and doing an inventory control on it plus with cooks and keeping Absolutely. it clean yeah like you can't replace people i like i'm not a chain restaurant guy right mm -hmm. but i work i've worked for one of the biggest restaurant companies in the world however you learn how to run a business, you know, like when you're working at a chain because they scrape all the mayonnaise out of the bucket. Are they, <laughs> you know, that's my million dollar spatula. Yes. You know, yes. I remember, I think I had a job at like Ruby Tuesdays or TGI Fridays and I needed to make more money because I think we were on, we are looking at our second kid and I was, you know, just finished culinary school and I, you know, I had a chef job, but it wasn't working. You mm -hmm. know, it's just you, money, money's money. You got to make money. You got to live. You got to live. You gotta live. And the guy, I was, I was scoring ribs, right? And I, I had two things. I had like a big list, a prep list, and one of it was like to score like twenty five orders of ribs or twenty, and like wow. twenty five baby back <laughs> needed to be scored, and then you needed to make like four gallons of um, their salsa, and the salsa was pace, pace in the Pecan gallon jar. Uh -huh. I remember that one, yes. And then like you diced five five by six tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> like and but you slice them through the tomato witch, uh -huh. and then you put them in the dicer and you smash them through and then you put those five tomatoes inside the gallon of tomato sauce and that was the salsa. Mm -hmm. I don't it, and I was like this is bootleg in my head right. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm scoring these ribs, and the manager, the kitchen manager, comes in and he goes, "Where's your cut glove?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "You're using a knife. You have to have a cut glove." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "For what?" Mm -hmm. And this this is my mentality, right? I'm yeah. like, and he goes, if you cut yourself, it, it costs a lot of money, and you need that cut glove so you don't cut yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, and he goes, like, you'll get written up if you cut yourself. And I said, if I cut myself with this knife when I'm scoring this rib, I'll write myself up. That was like, that's how crazy. <laughs> and yeah, like, I'm not gonna like, that's it's good my stuff. Yeah, I, it's my fault if I cut myself because I'm the one. This is you know 20, 20 years at ago. At that point, where, at that point, did they make you wear the uh, 
vinyl was, glove. No, and no, then there the, was, and then the cut glove, and then the that, other vinyl glove. That was the no, that was the metal glove that was chained to the wall. Oh, you remember that hell thing? No. Yeah, there was like. It was like this metal glove. I remember that thing. Now that you bring it up, <laughs> the reason I forgot about that thing because I hated that thing. I remember but, it, yes. And then, you know, I was like, I was such a pretentious little prick, you know. Like, I was so, and uh, I don't know how much has changed. I was so full of myself. But um, now I'm like, hey, where's your cut glove? 20 years later, I'm like, hey, where's your cut glove? Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's $3,000. I don't want you, A, to hurt yourself. Yeah. B, I don't want you to cut yourself because that's three grand. But, like, if you cut yourself bad. Right. Like wish, it's, we, wish we all have. Oh God, super glue or like there's many uh -huh. a, there's many a wounds on the hand that sure. you should have like gotten fixed. So like I I get it. I don't re I don't regret working at those places. I think they taught me something like hey this is what's important. This mm -hmm. is how you mass produce. But I didn't learn that stuff until I started. I in just Navy. I I think that because the, and in the early two thousands that's when like the the you know Food Network started and that's when. The, now, uh, are you a Food Network guy now, or were you a Food Network uh, like for me in the past? Like okay. you couldn't. My favorite, go. my favorite culinary shows were the great chefs of the world. That's yes. that's that was me. That I was, wish they started doing that again. I don't. I'm not a big watcher of uh, the competition shows. Okay, you know, I wanted to. I love top. I love Top Chef. I do like that show. Do you watch it? I, I yeah. I'm okay. religious to Top Chef. Oh, that's awesome. Because like, I believe those people are they're doing something. You know, like they're the casting directors of Top Chef, I think they're really pulling great people. No, they've done it like I've had I I know a couple of people that yeah. have done it and it's it's opened up some seriously good doors for right. them. And I think Amazing. you know like that's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. I I watched the season that my dear friend was on, but I haven't been able I don't and I've talked about it on other episodes. It's one of the questions that I always ask. Okay, Food Network now or Top Chef? You know, like for me, I grew up watching the old school stuff. Yeah. Julia Child, Yan can cook, mm -hmm. Galloping Gourmet, <laughs> um, Justin, Such good stuff. Justin Wilson, mm -hmm. the the actor that acted like he was from you know like Louisiana. What yeah. we gonna do? And, <laughs> uh -huh. um, and then as I got older, you know, like Emerald. Of course, for, like His first uh, show. David Rosengarten taste mm -hmm. was one of my favorites. Uh, Even Bobby Flay in the beginning. In the beginning, in the beginning? Well, in the beginning when he had uh, grilling yep. and chilling with the farmer with the overalls, the <laughs> chef yes. that was like when he was chiffing on some basil. He's like, "You just roll it like you're gonna roll a joint." <laughs> and I was like, "This is uh, my favorite TV show yeah, ever." Yeah, I, I mean, I watched like that. Really was cool stuff, and I, I can always go back to that. You know, that's mm -hmm. when I think cook, cookbooks were still like very important and. Because there was nothing else, you know? So I, I did get a lot of inspiration for their Ming Tsai. Um, oh, East Meets West. Yes, yes. East Meets, like, that was good. And, you know, I don't know. I think I probably said it, and you'll have to dig through the minutes. But um, a young, uh, a girl that I went to high school with, she went to culinary school at Art Institute in Houston. And she had to do a project. And she called Ming Tsai because she was from Okinawa and she felt like she he represented what she wanted to be mm -hmm. as a chef. Mm -hmm. And homie called her back. That's that's le that's 100% a legit awesome yes. person. That's what that's I, I I build lost car, I'm not trying to get off too much no, out of tangent, you're but fine. people know my number. 562-299-3501. My phone starts ringing as you know like about 3:30 in the morning and I'm up you know, I am here right now. Yeah. So it, it just gives people a personal touch. And mm -hmm. I hope to never lose that. You know, if and there has been some times where people don't call and they just call the office, which is a godsend sometimes. Yeah. But right. Let you sleep just a little bit. Just more. a little longer. Um, I mean, you sent me a text at like three thirty in the morning yesterday or the day before. And you're like, hey, are we still on for this? <laughs> I'm like, I know you're not up right now, chef. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, give me give me three hours. I just laid down. No. So so what I'm going what I was coming at was I'm not against where I worked. I love every job I had. And, you know, maybe it's wrong for me to say that. I'm a little embarrassed to say about the... Uh, well, I, I mean, I think I'm embarrassed that I had a job at, you know, X, Y, or Z, or right. some of the shit I did. Yeah. Like, everybody's like... I think when you work in it long enough, mm -hmm. you're like... You talk to somebody and they're like, oh, where'd you go? And you're like, oh, I worked at Hometown Buffet. And they're like, shithole. <laughs> and you're like, you know what? That's true and not true, right. bro. I well, just cranked out like a thousand meals. I learned like, how to make go. food. Let's, yeah. let's go. You want to see if you can cook faster than me? Let's go. I, I will always outcook my cooks. Right. Always. As right. and that's was my competitive nature. Um, 
But when, when, like I said, when cooking shows started coming out and then the culinary schools, when they started popping up all over the place. And when I started, it was trade tech and a couple other like colleges in the area. And that was it, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't like Art Institute everywhere. It wasn't the uh, Cordon Bleu everywhere. Right. So in, in the year about 2002, 2003, after I left the Angel Stadium, I was going up against some heavy hitters. People that were, at that point, cooking was cool. Chefs weren't, chefs weren't cooks anymore. Chefs were celebrity chefs all of a sudden, right? Mm -hmm. And the people who were hiring wanted to know, who, who have you worked for? Like, like, tell me. Like, they were like schoolgirls. Like, tell me, who did you work for before? Like, what, what awesome places? What school did you go to, right? Mm -hmm. So I was interviewing up against some pretty good people who were, that had the pedigree, that had the, um, that worked for Wolfgang Puck at that point, you know? Okay. Before that's, yeah, this is so West Coast. Yeah, for sure. That, that's what it was. And, and they started like, you know, and I had to like, I, we were doing tastings back then. You know, mm -hmm. you did that whole eight hour work test you know interview or whatever and what i learned on that day or, or a couple times was i might not be able to to make better food okay but i i know that i got a lot of passion mm -hmm. and i know that i have charisma so i believe that i was a good front man so i could take a a, a steak or a salmon right that was just cooked with salt and pepper and oil on the grill and that was it but i could sell that better than the guy who worked for Wolfgang Puck, or I could sell it better than somebody who had, you know, two years of schooling just because of the way I spoke about it and the passion. And this is why I cooked this for you. This is why it's, I a, would, it's a perfect salmon. So here I, you go. I would agree with that. And I, and I would, and I would get those jobs and I would get those jobs. And you know, I, and that's, that's how my life started. And that's how my life still is, is, you know, we don't, we might not make the best chef coat. I think we do, but, Put my competitor on and right. let me try to sell you mine. And I promise you, by the time I'm done telling you why we do what we do and why there's chef coats cut and why there's pen pockets on your lapel and why there's a magnetic loop on the back placed which, where it's at. Which has been stolen by many a people now, Many right? a people, yes. But you're the OG on that one. I am. Yeah, and you're the one that came up with that. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to let that slide because there's a lot of people that have put that on the back of their coat. But they're not, not putting to mention it, any names. They're but, not putting it in the right place because they've never worked in the kitchen. So the placement of that little back apron loop, I'm not going to give away my trade secrets because you can buy a coat and then know exactly why we do what we do. But I, I, we, we put it there for, for a very particular reason. It keeps, you know, it keeps the apron off your neck. It, mm -hmm. it puts the straps on the, you know, your shoulders. Um, but like I said, if you put my coat on compared to one of my competitors, even if there's a price difference, which there is, Mm -hmm. I'll still sell you my coat, just like I'm gonna, just like I, I sold those salmons and steaks that just had salt pepper on them. People were coming out with, look at my my steak with Bernays sauce, like fuck, ah, you mm -hmm. know, like I can make Bernays sauce like this, and I love it. I can make hollandaise sauce, but these guys were coming out with some plates that looked, you know, they were stacking vegetables, and at that point, you know, mashed potatoes and then the and, uh -huh. and yeah. then the steak yeah. and the vegetables. Yep, yep, and yep. I was, and my point was, here's a well cooked steak. Where's the rest? You don't need the rest. What you need to know is I can cook a steak because that's the most important thing. That's the thing that costs the most. So, that, I love that. Hey, I you to. brought you brought out like you're like, hmm. All right, here's a perfectly cooked steak. Mm -hmm. Where's everything else? You don't need that. <laughs> the rest of that's just after th you just like went. You just mind fucked. Yeah, you're just I, like, you don't need the basil you're oil up around in the, the head. head. I, I had to be. I had to like you said. I had to have a different angle. I had to do, I had to roll out Lost Car with two food trucks that looked like tailor houses when you walked inside of them. I had to do things different, and I will continue to do that. I, you have to, I think as a young chef, you, you have to do things that are a little different, you know? Like, and, and you have to have the charisma. Like, you have to be able to speak. And I always taught my cooks. I, I, was, I was an ROP teacher for a while for culinary. Mm -hmm. And I would teach my cooks when you're talking to somebody, don't talk to them. Talk to them five feet behind them. You know, like, you don't, you don't talk like this, and this is what I'm giving you. No, you talk like you're talking to the wall behind them. That's where they're standing because it just gives you more of a presence. You know, you're, you're saying to yourself, 
hello, you know, so and so. And and you you just have to have a presence about you. You have to have some type of charisma. I mean, President Kennedy did. I'm not saying I'm like that, but all the you know, President Kennedy, Obama, like all those people have amazing charisma about them where you when they speak, you just want to shut up and just listen. Mm-hmm. And as a chef, be, turning into an executive chef, I needed to wrangle up some of these young cooks who had come out of culinary school who are working for me thinking, oh, this guy doesn't even have any school. No, shut up. Mm-hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. There, There is wisdom in what I'm saying, you know? I think that was the toughest part. It was like, um, it's so hard to lead a kitchen of a bunch of people. When you first started, were you aggressive with them? Were you, because um, you're extremely passionate, but were you the crazy chef that was like, no. what the no, uh, I try to be uh, the respect, the respectful chef in the beginning, but I was I was mild mannered, mm-hmm. and then I I felt I got taken taken advantage of all the time. Right. So then I just be I learned to be respectful, but you know there was a tone about me. You, you, we're gonna be best friends, but if you call in sick two three times four times, and I know you're not sick, we're not gonna be friends anymore. <laughs> you, you you don't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, like, like, don't make me get to the point where we're not friends. You know, let 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 me. You're gonna be my employee. Right. I'm gonna be your boss. But out of work, like we're friends. We're gonna be cool. I'm gonna teach you things. I'm gonna push you up to the like as high as I could take you. But if you act stupid, then you're know. that's it. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna give you many chances. When when did you decide? Like, I mean, like, we've all, like, had interesting things throughout our entire career, like, where we're like, oh, man, I want to do this instead of this. Mm -hmm. But when were you like, I got this idea? What year was that? 2004, when when I was working at a place called Habana. I had an idea of a new chef coat. I was never the chef to wear the chili pepper pants. I never wore clogs. I always wore Doc Martens because they were awesome. They were comfortable. Um, I wanted things that were functional and didn't Mm -hmm. make me look like a clown. So I was in 2004. But the thing that made me that made me stop cooking was August 2013 and my daughter went to graduate high school mm-hmm. and she was moving to Arizona to go to college at Arizona um, State. Okay. Okay. And on the day she left, she came over the day before. You know, she said goodbye to me. She said goodbye to her brothers. That wasn't oh. it. That wasn't it, though. It was the night before. She came over and said goodbye, and I gave her a hug. Okay. It was the day she left. And I'm going to try not to get emotional, but I do all the time when I tell this. I tell the story. So she um, called me, and on, on it was a Friday. And on that Friday, uh, I was rolling out a new menu. Instead of driving my daughter to college. You know, like I should have been there with her, driving her, helping her move in or whatever, because that's my little girl. And I knew on that day that she would never come back the same because she was going to have to split her time between me, her mother, her friends. And she was only going to be here maybe a week or a couple of days. And hey, dad, you know, it, it was going to be completely different. And on that day, I just told him I, I have a five year old and, and a seven year old. They were three and uh, three or four and two or three and one or whatever. Um and on that day, I told myself, I, I called. I called into work, and I and I talked to my boss, and I was like, I can't come in. Like I'm, I am ruined right now. Like I'm rolling out a menu today, and he's like, you got to get in here. And I was just like, okay, I'll get there when I'm not like in like ball <laughs> like balling, balling, right? So on that day, I told myself that I have to do something so that I can spend more time with my kids so that I don't miss out on all her volleyball games or their, mm-hmm. you know, their baseball games or whatever. You know, Carly was in volleyball. So that I don't miss out on the dances. And, you know, I, I, I needed to find another way out. And that's when I decided, like, that was August. I, I, and I quit in May. So it took me eight months before I just said, that's enough. Like, I, I can't, I, like, I'm, I have admiration. I'm, and I would, like, I am in awe at how much you've been able to do. And, you know, when 
ECOs has it has had ups and downs and, and like we like business is hard as hell. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we always find a buffer inside the restaurant, right? We always find mm-hmm. this kitchen we can cook in and with this guy that's gonna pay us to cook. But when you go on it, when you put it out there and it's yours and it doesn't work or it works or they're like, you know, there's bills. There's and, bills and paychecks. And brother, you were like I'm doubt. I had this to. is this and like you made it when you t- like when you, I was getting chills when you were talking about, you know, because she's going to college mm-hmm. and you're like, I can't I'm not driving you to college. Right. And, you know, like what kind of dad is that? Well, a dad that was trying to provide for the, my family at that time. Right. Right. And then we I think we do such this. We do this crazy thing where we're like, that's what it takes to do what I love. Right. And so, but therefore, even, but what am I selling? Right. And, to, and the people lose that. W- one thing I, as well, like, I'll, I'll tell you two things that are in my brain all the time is on the day that, you know, that my days are over here, mm-hmm. the day that I die, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll be lucky enough to be coherent enough to be on a, in a and it sounds morbid, but on a, like in a bed in a hospital. Who's going to be around that bed? Is it going to be the owners of all these different restaurants that I've worked for? Are they going to be saying, hey, man, thanks so much for working all those hours and spending all that time and making me all this money? Or is it going to be my kids, you know, wishing they had more time with me? So I think of that. And then the other thing that that continues to propel me is my uncle told me once when right before I started, he said, you know, you're you're leaving this job. I was making, you know, over six. I was making six figures. You know, I was making a, a great living. And he said, the one thing you got to do is you never look back on the hardest days, on the days where your truck breaks down, on the days where your air condition is off and it's 100 degrees in there and you're driving around and you're upset. You can't stop and look back at what you've been doing for 20 years. You can't say, man, I should just go back to cooking. And my sister has taught me persistence is like the key. So on the darkest days, you just have to just not look back and know that you built a career cooking. I could do this as well. I just got to do it a little faster because I'm getting older. Right? right, right. But so, so I, I've learned a ton, I, and I learned a lot of this through cooking. You know, I've learned persistence. I've learned hard work. I've learned work ethic. You know, and I, I just there is no end for me. I will die trying to make this one of the best successful chef apparel companies in the world. You know, I'm not going to stop locally. Like I want to be that guy. You know, I want to be able to come to these cool podcasts and talk to cool people and hopefully inspire some. And maybe, you know, you, you hear one thing that might stick with you. And, and that's that's what I'm trying to do right now. Well, you're I mean, you're doing it. like your your drive, your ambition is never. I mean, dude, I, I don't th- when we were on your truck the first time, mm-hmm. you're like um, we were talking about because I looked over to one side and you had chef works. On yeah. the other side of the truck, right? And I said, and for me, I was like, "Wow, you have Chef Works too?" Mm-hmm. And you're like, "Yeah, I invited the guy, the CEO, on my truck two weeks after we opened." And I was like, "What?" And he's like, "I did it two weeks after we opened." And I was just, I, uh, I showed him what we were doing, yep. and I was like, "This is what I'm doing, and this is where I'm coming." And the guy was like, "Wow, that's cool," and I was thinking to myself, "Holy shit, balls!" <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like that's, I mean, that ambition and that drive, nobody. Like that's, that's legendary. You you know, like, just, and, and you're like, I'm going to be the guy. And that's who you're going against now. Like that's, that's who, like their chef coat designs have changed because of you. I, absolutely. They have seen a push in our, in our stuff. Like their entire, in my opinion, mm-hmm. their whole urban, the, ur- urban, urban, yeah. their entire, and like, listen, fashion and culinary is kind of like a thing of mine. Mm-hmm. I, I know all the brands out there and I would say that, um, that urban collection yeah. was about eighteen months, twenty months <laughs> after the guy walked on your truck when he's like, eh. Yeah. And then like he's like, oh shit, we gotta we gotta do something. He he, uh, he walked me through their they they invited us to their corporation. Right. And we walked through and I met with their um their design team. And they were there was like twenty people around this table and stuff like that, and they were drawing up stuff and and i asked him i said because i was looking 
and they're looking like like they were from Fitum, which is awesome. Like, you know, go to design school, go to fashion design school, and that's awesome. But I asked him, I said, hey, how many of these people have actually cooked? And he's like, I don't know. Let me ask. And he said, hey, how many people have been in the restaurant industry before? One girl raised her hand and said she was a server. Uh, so I saw what they were doing. And not, you know, somebody told me, like, uh, um, when they copy you, it's flattery. But when you're starting a business. And it's not flattery. It's, it's scary. It's scary. Sc- scared as fuck. Like, all of a sudden, you start coming out with all these. Yeah, because the marketing budget is nine times stronger than you. They're a $300 million company. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited with what we do. But they're a $300 million company. Do you remember, like, because they're the Chef Coat guy now. But do you remember when the Chef Works catalog would come out? And you would I'd be see so chef, excited. Like, the Chef, you'd be like, shit. Oh, look at uh-huh. this guy from Fran- <laughs> Blu-ray Resort. And uh-huh. he's like, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. Timothy, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, damn, one day I might be in the Chef Works catalog. I called them one time. And I was like, I got a great looking group of, of cooks. Can you guys take a picture of us? And... Of course you did. I love. I, love I swear you. to God. I, I swear I, to God. I'm not. I don't. Yeah. I know. I, I. I just called. And to be honest with you, I'll tell you another thing. In February, before I opened, mm-hmm. I had ordered four Chef Works coats. And like I said, I'm not talking bad about them. They're an amazing company because that's why they're doing the money they're doing. Right. But I will tell you my experience and my opinion based on them. I ordered four Chef coats, and I was a large at that time. And I ordered it with the... the You're look. looking large right now. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah, feeling good. Feeling good. I am. Um, I ordered it with the logo on it, uh-huh. and I ordered it with the name on it. And, you know, executive chef title. So, and it was this really cool coat, black pinstripe coat. Really cool new design. Because at that point, chefs... I don't even remember. There's another company out of Chicago, but they were doing some really cool stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Um but then they, they started come, Chef Work started coming out with these cool coats. And I was like, I like that coat. So ordered it. And you know how hard it is to get a purchase order from a hotel or oh, anywhere, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's not easy. It's not like you're just calling up saying, hey, I need this. So I get the four coats in, probably four or 500 bucks worth of stuff, and put it on. It was the most uncomfortable coat that didn't fit. And I called the company. And I said, hey, listen, I got this idea. I got this idea. Why don't you open up stores, little retail stores around where chefs can actually try on stuff? Because my sales reps would never bring in the right stuff. You know, they would they would mm-hmm. come in with, "Hey, this is what it looks like." And I was I, I said, "I want to talk to somebody to tell you my idea." And you know, it fall where, on death's door. Yeah, oh yeah, no. Like and I'm, I'm and then, wait, so and happy I, that they didn't listen. And I couldn't get my money back because it was embroidered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. So we, now, we, what was that, like 10 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you say that was? Like, when did you make the call? That was four, four years ago four, in February. <sighs> Do you see that? I still remember that stuff. Well, it sticks with you because... It was 2014 in February. Yeah. It, it just It just bugged me, like... I just spent all this money. Now I got to go to my boss, tell him I need to get four more chef coats. These ones are no good because they're already embroidered and I can't return them. Mm. And mm. It, it was just such a hassle. There's got to be a better way. There has to be a better way. I think you found it. Now, what's your, because you've talked a lot about like what the, when Carly's going to college. Mm-hmm. Do you live with a lot of regret? <sighs> Do you look back and go, fuck? That's a tough question because you, you, you're going to make me cry, but I'm not. I've learned to, because like I said, I, I did abuse drugs throughout you know, a portion of my, my culinary career. Uh-huh. You know? I think we all have our demons. Yeah, definitely. And I learned when I got clean in my, in my early 30s, part of that recovery was, was um, me learning that, re- that the guilt will kill you. And so for the past... You know, so twelve profound. or thirteen years now, I have learned not to not to like let that guilt like resonate because it will just kill you. I remember there there were days where I would buy drugs and then for her dinner she would get a, a package of Doritos. Like you know that that and she was four, you know. And I, I got clean right away because of those those awful parts of my life. But it's still part of my life. So if I think like that, you know, I'm sure she's gonna hear this. But 
it, it the guilt will just bring you down. It's just gonna kill you. So I just have to make it part of my story. You know, it's just chapter. It's just chapter eight of of my book of life. You know, that's that's what happened. I had a great growing up. I didn't start drinking until I was 22. I started using drugs at 23. I stopped at 32. You know, I had cars repossessed. I got divorced. I did everything that everybody has already that that has done. Mm -hmm. But and my third, my early thirties, like I said, I just had to, I just had to learn to, like, let go and let God, you know. Yeah, if you can't, uh, you can't worry about it. You can't, you can pray about it or worry about it. You can't do both. Yeah, right? and I could, and I could talk about it, and hopefully, someone's let, out there and is gonna say, "Wow, you know, like, yeah, that's I'm in a dark place," and just let it go. Let it go. That's, and you know what I think? Um, I think successful. I think chefs really successful or passionate. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say successful because the, there might be different sets of a journey. Right. But I think different levels passionate, of success. passionate chefs are extremely critical of mm -hmm. their own work. Mm -hmm. And if they make a mistake, they will lash themselves to death with that mistake right. way before you could get the opportunity to. <laughs> so that guilt, like, just let it go. Like, you're only as good as your last plate, but there's always tomorrow for another service. Right. And, and I'm priding myself on my relationship with my daughter now. We have the best relationship. Honestly, we talk three or four times a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes to my boys, on the days that I don't have them and they're with their mother, I FaceTime them in the morning, I FaceTime them in the afternoon, and then right before they go to bed. So I see my boys every day still. And thank God for FaceTime. That's amazing stuff, right? <sighs> Come on. That right. is just amazing stuff. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, let me hold this phone up and I gotta <laughs> Hey guys, what's yeah. going on? I talked to them on the way over here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's I was about to ask. Did you talk to him? Because we're shooting kinda late in the evening. Yeah. No. Now, if you said you had three heroes. Mm -hmm. Um if there was a teacher in your life that you could say thank you to, who would it be? That's a good one. It would be uh, Marco Garcia. He beat my ass cooking. Really? Yeah. He was my uh, executive chef at the Angel Stadium. I mean, he... I'm trying to think if I've ever met him. No, I don't think I've met him. Yeah, he's now at um, the Blind Rabbit in Anaheim, and he has another opportunity that's coming up. I won't say it. But mm -hmm. that guy, it was my father figure in cooking. I talked to him this morning. So I'll call him and just be like, hey, how's it going, you know? But did that, he ever? Did he ever work at Honda? Yeah, we all did. Did he work for? Did he ever go to Staples? No. Okay. He, he, me, Marco Garcia, Marco Zapian. Uh huh. We all were together. Okay. Um, but there were times where th that I would just be stupid, and he would. At that point, he was able. You know, it was like I said, early two thousands, and he was come, come here real quick. Let's go talk. And he would walk me into his office, and I knew I was going to get a lashing. And no joke, he would slam the door, and he would just lay into me. So I think that if anybody that is a mentor mm -hmm. to me in my early career, Marco Garcia all day. All day. Yep. Now, we talked about regret. We talked about your teachers and the people you would say thank you to. Mm -hmm. Where do you get inspiration to wake up in the morning? Because, like, dude, I mean... We've called each other in some dark times and yeah. some good times. We've been there for each other. But, like, inspiration, I find sometimes it comes in strange places. Where do you go and you're like, and, and refuel? Where does it, where do you get that? You know, I'm in so many restaurants every week that I get to talk to a ton of awesome people. Um, I got to talk to a ton of chefs and, and restaurant tours that are just all about life. You know, they're just all about that dish or look at this, Carlos, come and taste this. What do you think about this? So I don't I'm not going to say I don't wake up every, you know, every day with a super smile on my face. But right. there are days where, you know, I'll wake up and I'll say to myself, like, wow, I got to go here today. You know, I got to go to drop off, you know, a, a case. I got to go to. I'm, I'm leaving today to go to New York, or I'm going to South Carolina, or yeah, and you, you drove know? down today from Malibu, right? I was in Malibu a few minutes ago, a few hours ago, actually. Yeah, so I think my inspiration comes from that. And then on the days where I just want to sleep, mm -hmm. I just tell myself that's the way you're not going to make money. Like my my okay. my desk, you know, honest, and that's 
I, I told you earlier, you know, there's passion about what I do, and, and I definitely want to, like, teach people and say there's a way out, kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, time served. I did 21 years. I did my time. I missed 21 Mother's Days. I missed 21 Christmases, blah, blah, blah. So on the days where I just want to sleep, I tell myself, well, I, I got to make money. Yeah. You know? How did you? Like, you gotta, okay, you gotta, so I, you said, I chase the dream, but you got to get the green. That's what I was saying. That's that. I love that. Yeah. Because I think that... Um, it helps you. I mean, like, money makes the world go round, right? Mm-hmm. And like, you can be altruistic, but you still got to pay them bills, because the bill, the the bills got to get paid. The bills got to get paid, and and like, you're running your own thing. You're running your own company, mm-hmm. and you know, as much as um, as much time and effort that we spend as a family putting into ECO, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. I get up in the morning and I hit I, I hit the traffic. I drive into the Honda Center. I hit my meetings. I go into the kitchens and I talk to cooks. I'm the chef at the Honda Center. Right. It's not my own thing. I work for Henry and Susan Samueli. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, and there's such a, I would say it's excitement to hope one day, man. Ah, oh, could I? You know, like just yeah. work for myself because mm-hmm. I've always that's what got me into it. I wanted to be my own boss mm-hmm. and not not getting into ECO, but getting into cooking because I love to do it. And then I wanted to run a restaurant and for you to get up and, and like I, we were, we we're t- before the podcast, we were talking about different restaurants of where I was like, cause he was telling me about this new spot down the street and mm-hmm. like some other plans he's got. And I was like, Hey, have you ever been to taco Maria? And he's like, what? <laughs> that Caesar salad. And I like, you know, that I act Caesar like salad. Was that Caesar salad is so sick. Yeah. Like I act like a nut job when I like when I have food that hits me, I like lose my mind. Right. I'm like, oh, my God, did you? you know, and I'm like shaking. <laughs> yeah. And like I went there and chef, you're killing it. You're killing it. Like I, I was I was posting on Instagram talking mm-hmm. about it. I got back to work and I was talking to the chefs. and I was like, you ever been to Taco Maria? And they're like, no. What, I was like, what, get what kind get, of Caesar is that? Let's just let uh, people know that uh, the Caesar is no, no, like, not not the Caesar. Let's the how many seats? Like you got to okay. What the, do we? I think there's I think there's it twenty. I know it was probably okay. There's like uh there's there's probably twelve to fourteen at the bar inside. Mm-hmm. There's a four, a two, and a four. So that's um there's a ten top that you could sit. So that's twenty four, and I think there's maybe thirty seats on the patio or twenty five. And it's incredible that. Car- Carlos Salgado. Carlos, yes. He um, ran the Taco best, Maria was a food truck. Yeah, best chef of 2015. Yep. I'm like, this guy. And so, like, I'd always wanted to go, but never found the time. Mm-hmm. And then I went, and when you go to those restaurants and you say you find inspiration talking to these people and meeting these people, when I go and eat at a restaurant or talk to a chef or get to sit down and talk about I'm like, I love what we do Mm -hmm. i love our industry but when you eat that that salad and you have the tacos and you're like shut the door that shit is so good i have to i always have to really watch what i eat because when i walk into some of these places these guys are like you want some a5 wagyu (laughs) and i'm like uh yeah you know yeah yeah, no problem and i'm going to (laughs) to the next place and (laughs) you know you want to try some corbuda pork yeah sure sure okay okay Okay, no problem now um if the what are your hobbies? It's a good question. Um it, it's gonna sound super cheesy. No, no, no like this is the nothing cheesy about it. Nerf gun wars with my boys. Dude. I'm not kidding you. Now do you use Nerf guns or the there's another brand that we use, Boom? I, th- I don't Boom you know what company? all I know is that we so, go at it. Uh, that's so much fun. Yeah. So when I get the boys um, sometimes their mom will drop them off and they'll walk upstairs and I'll I'll have two guns ready with their little gu- with their little bullets and I'll be <laughs> just laying it like, out. We're we're going. Like good luck. You could wa- you could watch this stuff on my Instagram. I'm gonna videotape one for you and I'll put it on there. Uh, yeah, you need to. And like they, if and you, the Instagram on Lost Car dot Los <laughs> with the boys yesterday when he was talking your oldest son's name is what is it? Oh my god. When he had those glasses Come on. on. I we were getting a haircut, <laughs> okay? Like, and he's like, Dad, can I wear your glasses? I was like, okay. And then he said he's uh, What was that? It was like Thomas Henry or something. <laughs> it was like so crazy. He was, just, he was like, I'm the coolest guy alive. Yeah. You'll never catch me. And I was just looking at him like, 
<laughs> what are you doing? Who taught you this? <laughs> He's been watching your Instagram stories, brother. He's I been, told him, I said, who hurt you? Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Who, who, who hurt you, brother? Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, uh, you're, I, I, you come alive when you're with the kids. Like when absolutely. you guys, when you, I know you guys went on a trip recently yeah. and, and like, you're like, they were, they had their backpacks and they were going to Angel Stadium and you're like, <laughs> why are you so gangster? Why are you so Because <laughs> he was like this. <laughs> I was like, I was going to go see my friends at the Angel Stadium. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, oh, well, let's go. Come on, guys. Because we could have, because here's my thing. We could have either stayed at home, watched TV and gone to bed at 830. Or God, you definitely didn't Or do that. I could have just got in the car with them, taken them to Angel Stadium, watched the game and then. Show them to not necessarily show them, but like introduce them to the chefs there. Right. So for 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 that for Carson to be like, "What's up?" with his fingers or whatever. I'm. <laughs> why are you a gangster? <laughs> who, who taught you to be that? Why are you so hardcore? Now you grew up here in California, Southern California is yeah. like your hometown all, uh-huh. all your life, mm-hmm. and now you're traveling everywhere, bouncing all over your like world traveler. I kind of like that about it. Yeah. Now, were you a good student in high school? I was. The worst student, my sophomore year, I actually got kicked out of my the parochial school, St. Paul. Um, I would get my report card and I would hide it, the the four the four semesters or four yeah oh my four semesters. My my sec the second semester I got I think I got like two Fs and four Ds. <laughs> No joke. <laughs> you, my Listen, mom. My mom was gonna. Mom, I'm sorry because my mom. Is she's gonna be so mad that you told everybody your business? No, she's fine. <laughs> but she, my, a week after we, it was the the summer break. We she got the report card, and she opened it up, and it wasn't a report card. It was a letter saying that because I got four Fs and two Ds, my last semester, <gasps> which equaled six Fs that whole year. That I was no longer allowed to go back to St. Paul, so my dad was gonna murder me. One, my mom grabbed my ass, got me in the car, and she took me back to St. Paul. She walked me right into the dean's office, and then the dean walked us into the principal's office, and they uh, gave me one chance, but it came with a lot of stipulation. It came with <laughs> I couldn't get anything below a C my junior year and my senior year, and I had to go to summer school two classes per summer school. For those two next um, summers. Yeah. And then I had to take, um, they called it O period. So I had to take one class. Zero period. Zero yeah. period. Yeah. Uh, dude, I graduated with a 2.2, and that's because I had two shop classes and two tennis classes. <laughs> like my senior year, that's what brought my grade point average up. Yeah. Like I was a horrible student. And then, like, we recently just did a tour with my oldest, and he's like, I'm going to take Calc 3, so I don't have to take it next wow. year. I'm like, oh my God, you're definitely not my. Uh, What's crazy is my daughter went to, like I told you, Arizona State, and then she is such a good person. She's such a good student. Like, she's so hardworking. She you know, definitely takes after her mother, but I, I think it's me. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. She graduated in three years. Oh. She graduated college in three uh, uh, years, and now she's working in movies and stuff. Yeah, she's doing stuff in movies. Yeah. Now Post-production. I've got – when are you most at peace mentally? Uh, I would say most at, that's a good question too. Most at peace mentally currently is, is when sales are rolling. Okay. Because then I'm not, I'm not concerned so much about not making payroll because that's a fight every day. Every morning you wake up, you know, we're supporting nine people in, in our business right now and I'm the, I'm the main sales person. So yeah. I have to make sure that you know, sales are coming in so that there's no skip in payroll. And, and thank God we've been very, you know, very lucky that sales continue to roll in. So when when sales are rolling in for me, I, I could breathe. Okay. I could breathe. And then um, sometimes in my car, I'll, I'll put on some really cool music and I'll just jam yeah, out. Yeah, your music selection is like everything. <laughs> All the time, everything. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. They're really killing it. Now... For all those people that are struggling in the kitchens and out there, what kind of word of advice would you give them? Talk. You know, if you're struggling, if you're struggling with with cooking and you know you're not getting somewhere where you want to be, I think you know, talk to your chef. I think if you're struggling with addiction or you know alcoholism, talk to someone. You know, because life gets real a lot better real fast when you start when you when you when you focus on being. You know, not using or not or not drinking. You know, your your culinary career can really 
excel. I think that, you know, even when it comes to personal stuff, you know, don't don't hold it in. You know, I'm an open book. Just like you can talk, I can talk. And just like you know, in my darkest days last year, I, I you were one of the first persons I called. And, you know, it's, you, I just am very open. And I think that if there's one thing of advice, like I tell my little boys, you, you, we talk. You know, we have dinner at the dinner table, and we don't, there's no TV on. Like, we're, we're talking. How That's was your awesome. day? You know, how was your, and then at, they're at a point now where they're like, hey, dad, this is what's happened. You know, mm-hmm. oh, okay, let's let's talk about it. Or, hey, Dad, this is how I'm feeling. And, you know, I, I think that anonymity is one thing, but I also think that just talking. It's it's the whole new social media, you know, rise. It's everybody's stuff is out there, so don't don't hide from it. Nah, I you know every everybody posts the highlight reel is what we say. You know, yeah, nobody, you got to live past that high right. Nobody sees the behind the scenes. You know, so so talk to somebody. All right, so talking, mm-hmm. being open, like. You know, I I find it interesting how we do the podcast and um, everybody gets an opportunity to kind of go through where they've been, what they've done. But you've kind of done you've kind of done it all so far, right? You know, like we recently did a dinner together, and mm-hmm. for those of you guys, I, I did this uh, <laughs> I did this liver foundation dinner. It was pretty awesome. We had like what was that five courses? <laughs> yeah, and um, we had a game. And we were super short-staffed at the Honda Center, so uh, no one really could come and help. Right. And I, I pick up the phone, and I'm like, hey, Carlos. Um, and you're like, what's going on? I was like, I need a favor. And you're like, what is it? And I was like, uh, you want to cook with me on this evening? And you're like, sure, no problem. And I'm like, no, seriously. We're going to do five courses, <laughs> and it's going to be really a big pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, it's just going to be, like, you and me and – you're like, no problem. I'll be there. What time do you want me to show up? Mm-hmm. And I would not have been able to do that dinner without you. We had a blast. I had a blast. Woo! Blast. You can call me anytime. Rocket Man. We were crazy. Yeah. That was an amazing... Like, we killed the dinner. The dinner was awesome, mm-hmm. right? Or at least I thought we did a good job. Oh, it was I a was, good job. You don't need to think it was. Like, the table, like, you know, uh, Gina and the was, kids, and the, the, the table looked great, and mm-hmm. it was us. And it was like, it kind of... It, it was so much fun, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it reminded me uh, a little bit about like when we did Arizona together. Mm-hmm. That was just such a cool I mean, experience. We had the best booth. Oh my god! We were at a in, at a show in Arizona, and we teamed up together. Normally, people get a ten by ten. We had what like a sixty by thirty. Well, I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> it was, well. You were telling a story about like when your AC breaks and you know it's the worst day ever. Right. It was like 112 degrees and we were putting the AC back on the top of your car, <laughs> like on the back of the food truck. Cause that's how we it goes back of the truck because yeah. it was inside and like we had to take you took it off. Right. We were you needed tools and then you guys were helping us load our trailer mm-hmm. and like we were just, just drenched, drenched, drenched. And it was like you know. But come on, what do you what do you do to build a brand? Whatever it takes. Whatever what I, it takes. And what, I, we, what we did then was I left. It was so hot. <laughs> we left the truck in Arizona for a month and a half. Yeah, because <laughs> that's right. And we, we left we, it there. And we drove. We, we, You're like, we're just going back. We're just going to go back. We're, we had we're, another car. We just. <laughs> like, it's just too hot to drive that thing. That's 117 yeah. degrees. God, we, we stayed. I think you guys bounced. We stayed. Like, that was. I think that's what I, I like about what you do. You're so real and genuine. I like that, you know, the kids and, and like, I saw you guys in Arizona, you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, we're friends on much more than just like on the business side. So sure. it's interesting to see how well it's doing. And I think it's doing that because people believe in you, you know, Gretchen's not going to, and you know what? I've never met Gretchen. Um, I, Gretchen, she's not going to show you around to all the other spots right if your gear isn't legit right she's not going to give you those opportunities if it's not going to work out for her and you know what right now i'm going up against this is what i've learned too i've learned i'm going up against i'm trying to get this really big company okay Mm -hmm. that that's my goal this year is i will always answer the phone to send one chef coat out hey chef what are you doing hey i really need this coat okay cool right i'm always going to do that the people who have my cell phone number now, and I just gave it out to your world, mm-hmm. like you can always call me, and I'm going to always answer the phone and do the best I can. But my goal this year is to really go after multi-unit chains, big box places, right? 
and, and we're doing that. So right now, I'm going after this account, and it's between me and another big chef coat provider. They're, they're wanting to sell the coat, similar coat, for about $8 cheaper than what I can do. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing a ton of coats, but they're doing a lot more. Right. But what I've learned is that it's, it's the relationships, you know? It's how am I going to overcome somebody who's been open for 30 years, another company like that. And, well, I, I got, we got to be friends because <laughs> friends take care of friends. And, you know, sometimes they don't have that, that ability to say sorry or, or yes, I'm going to buy this. But I don't have the ability to lower my price below what I get my stuff for. So my only other option right now when I roll these dice is my relationship with you has to be on point. Like, it, it just it's so important not to burn bridges, you know? Mm -hmm. And and if you do, then you got to do the work to repair them. Right. So when you're talking about, like, Gretchen and stuff, it's it's that. It's it's the, the relationship. That's what I'm going for right now is that build that relationship. Like, becoming best friends with... 250 people Dude. on my cell phone right now that are that say chef <laughs> I, like i don't know how you keep us all straight but i know that um when we first met i i had a god i had some like newspaper interview or article coming up and it was like super fast oh, so yeah. they, they called me hours and yeah they called me and they're like hey um <laughs> we want to do this article they they can come next thursday and then they called back and they're like hey that's not next thursday they need to move it up mm -hmm. they want to run it tomorrow and they mm -hmm. want to come today or mm -hmm. something it was just crazy and i was like um okay and we had probably met or spoken briefly and i'm right. like hey i need one of your coats as soon as possible right and you're like um all right no problem what i said it's I'm, we're going in the orange county register it's you know yeah. and I would hate to be wearing somebody else's coat besides yours. And right. you're like, um, somebody will be there in an hour and a half. Yeah. That's, and it was done. To, to build a brand like that, like there is no other way. As a chef, when I had catering managers come up to me, even though I couldn't stand it, and they're like, oh, my God, I forgot to give you this BEO. B -E -O. You know, it's, it's for tomorrow. Well, how am I going to get this food in? It's already past my ordering time. There, there wasn't, I've learned to never say no to something that I can do. So that, uh, say that again. I've I've learned to never say no to, to something, something that I, I can do. That I can do. So there are things that I am incapable of. Okay, mm -hmm. I can't fly. That would be pretty cool. But I can't run a four minute mile. But when I get a call from someone who is who l legitimately is in need, or like chefs, you know, by the time I get calls from chefs, it's already too late. Most of the time, these guys are ordering food, they're opening restaurants, they're doing this, they're doing their food costs, their health, health departments there. So by the time they realize, oh my God, I forgot to order a coat, it's already too late. Mm -hmm. So we always are working in, you know, we're, already, we're always behind. So I tell myself and I tell my staff that we don't say no if we can do it, you know? And, and now we're starting to charge like rush fees and stuff. And I'm really, you know, honestly, I love my sister. And she's running this company better than I can ever. But it's the rush fees that bug me because we could do it. Yeah, like, but, but you're like, listen. Yeah, like she's like, but listen. But she's running the business, so. She's like, hey, listen, we do need to charge this rush right, fee. Right, Because it, it, it throws everything else out of whack and there's a cost to it. And, I, to, and I've learned and that. You're, so. And you're like, but I was that guy. <laughs> I was that guy. That's me. That's me. I don't sit behind a desk. I'm in the <laughs> kitchen. I'm on the line. You know, I'm on the line working, and then I have to go and sit down and do a schedule or, or do food costs. All that stuff was against everything I knew. So, yeah, that's one thing I've learned is, is don't say no to something you can do. Now, God damn, that's really good, man. Don't say some, no to something that you can do. You might be tired, but you could still do it. It might be 3.30 in the morning, and your phone's going off. And you hear it, right? Mm -hmm. And I've told myself many times, turn your phone off. But it, if I'm getting a call from East Coast, and, it, and they're up at 6.30 because maybe they started at 4, right? Right. All I'm going to think about is, like, I got to get up and answer that phone call. Or who's calling? So if I'm already thinking that, 
Might as well just answer. Just answer the phone. Well, you know what was funny is because like we were, I was at your new spot because you've had a couple. You had, I was at, I say the new spot, but you've been there a couple of years now, mm-hmm. and um, I think it was around the time when you had the balloon fight with your staff. <laughs> it was like a week or so before, and I was trying was to get over the ju- there. Fourth of July. Fourth, fourth of July, and um, I don't know if you, if I posted something and then you posted something. One of us posted something on Instagram. Uh huh. Our Facebook, one of the two, and a chef, Richard Pl- uh, Placencia, Placencia mm-hmm. from Miami, right, <laughs> responded, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and it was like I think it was something that you posted because I was and mm-hmm. and you're like oh, Chef Jojo went to you know, I one of the best culinary classes that ever graduated from. Oh yeah. You're right. I remember As, that now. From South, you know, like we both went. We were both in the uh, bachelor's degree program at Johnson and Wales in North Miami at the same time. Right. And Richard flew out to you to get coats. Yeah. Once somebody told me once. Trust me, we haven't made it. Somebody told me once, you've made it when when people are coming to you, and he was the first one. That's what you told me, and that's what blew my mind because you're like, um, you know this guy? Yeah. And I was like, do I know this guy? Yeah, that was like my homie in class like because he was – I mean, he was working at – I think he was working at the Ritz. Um, but he was well, – I mean, like he was doing some serious – He's a great food. chef. He's, yeah. he's one of the best in Miami. Like Twisted Fork. Twisted Fork. There you go. And, yeah. um, you know, he, he reached out, and he's like um, – I hadn't spoken with him. Mm-hmm. Like there's that so he increased the number of people that I now know that are still cooking mm-hmm. from school. Mm-hmm. Like um there's him, myself, Michael Minch is running an entire culinary school in Naples. He was in my wow. C4 program. That's it that I know from the C4 program uh-huh. that are still cooking. Mm-hmm. I think Joe and uh, Rachel are doing something there in Atlanta, they do a soup kitchen. So I think they might still be good because that's five. Mm-hmm. But there was like 20 of us. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know what's happened to the rest. And then as far as the associate's degree that I got, like uh-huh. how many people are left from that. Right. I know um, one of my dearest friends, Ronald, in Atlanta, he plays music full time, but he's still a private chef. He does some gigs and every now and again. And he's a phenomenal cook. And I know Joe Ga- uh, Joseph Gallagher and Golan Pakin. But I don't know if they're still cooking. Mm-hmm. Like the business, like I don't know how many of us are left right. cooking. Right. And then like you and I, I'm from the East Coast. You're from the West Coast. I come out here to open uh, basically a new company for another company, and we cross paths. Mm-hmm. And then we do a little business together. Time goes on. Three years or so goes by. And right. then we kind of rekindle the friendship in the business. Sure. And you're like, you know this guy? <laughs> and I'm like, I went to culinary school right. it's with amazing. him. It's amazing. Yeah, like there's that when you say don't don't burn a bridge if you can avoid it don't yeah. because it's such a small industry it's it's so small I mean the cool thing right now is is people are texting me all you know I got a text from the, um, my friend Andy uh, yesterday and he's like hey I'm I'm going to San Diego where should I go and I could tell him the top three places I go you know or somebody's going to New Orleans hey I'm gonna be in New Orleans where should I go oh my God go see my friend boom. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's cool. Don't burn bridges. Like it's it's uh, it's inevitable. It's gonna happen. Well, yeah, it, it will. Ha- but you like uh, that's funny. The, the story that you're telling right now is 100. percent I called you. I was like, hey, you were like, we were working on something or something was happening, and I'm like, you're like, hey, where are you at? And I was like, I am in. I'm driving to, <laughs> yeah, Myrtle Beach. Yep. And you're like, are you serious right now? And I'm like, yeah. And you're like, you have to go see Kevin one Levine. Of, Kevin Levine, one a, a good, good best buddy of mine, number one and super I'm, fan. Yeah, and I'm like, really, and best buddy, yes. Yeah, and and I'm like, okay. And mm-hmm. I said, so I, you, you're like, here's his number. We start texting, mm-hmm. and now Kevin and I have talked at least once every four and a half, five months. Hey, what's going on? He mm-hmm. was there when Laney was getting sick. Like, I was on the phone with him when the Vegas shooting happened. Wow. For at the concert, he's wow. like. I was up working, and he texted me, mm-hmm. and we just, on Instagram, we started texting. He's like, you see this? And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? And I jumped on, Close because, yeah. yeah, and like, dude, I don't know if you know this, but Kevin Levine graduated from Johnson, Johnson & Wales, Wales right. North Miami campus, uh-huh. 
about a year before I did. Really? So when I uh-huh. show up in, 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 in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, with my whole crew, mm-hmm. we all go to dinner. You know, I take all 20 right. of the family. Because we, you guys all, all had met there, right? We all, well, like we were having our family reunion. Right. So we go there and we have dinner. And, you know, he's, I, we go in, we do some Instagram live, we do some Facebook, like mm-hmm. we just do some social stuff. And dinner's wrapped up. And then my wife's like, hey, you know, like everybody left. I and mean, it was my wife and I and the kids. And the kids go over to have a, like ice cream or something, McDonald's. And hey, Kevin and I are talking. You almost, Gina had to pry me out of there. Because as soon as he said, I was like, you went to where? Yeah. And I was like, did you have Todd Snowden? And he's like, yeah. How about Chef Brandenburg? Yeah. <laughs> Patricia Wilson. And he's like, yeah. i like, That's Dean so awesome. Nograd. And he's like, yeah. How about, uh, you know, Alan Lazar? Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 And it was wow. just like, what about Mr. Davis? And he's like, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know how I didn't even see. Well, I mean, it was such a, if you weren't in the same class, you didn't see him. But, mm-hmm. like, there's not a chance that we didn't know some of the same people. Right. Yeah, or across the same paths. Eighteen years later, crazy, right? A thousand. I drove almost two thousand miles to have dinner at his restaurant, and we lived. You know, we went to the same school, and I had no idea. And it's, you introduced us. It's it's like I keep saying it's it's time served. You know, the reason why Lost Car is doing well. One other reason is because there is legitimacy within what I say and and our brand. And that's because, I mean, come on. When Kevin calls me and he's on his way to wherever, or my friend Rob Johnson's calling me. And, and oh, Kevin also has Hot Blocks, too, right. which is a phenomenal cutting board uh, business. Like, a phenomenal cutting board. Check I, I out. will say this. between I have, like, five friends. You're one of them. Mm-hmm. That are the hardest working people I know. I mean, you're running the Honda Center. You're not just – it's not just hockey games. It's right. rodeo. It's <laughs> – you know, concerts. I mean, come on. That you're, and it, and I just found out that your team, your your chef team, you guys are in charge of all um, concessions as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we do the entire building. That's crazy. Like uh, over twenty million dollars a year. Yeah, that's crazy. And then you come and then you set up this, you know, Echo and this podcast, <laughs> and you're doing like it's amazing. Kevin is also one of the the few. That that guy works six days a week, I, I, open I, a close, and then he goes from working to making, making cutting, boards. cutting boards. Dude, I think come on, he he totally outworks me, hands down, come hands on. down. Like when I'm, I, he's still like I think about a week and a half ago, a homie threw up like an Instagram live, and I just jumped on because I was in between mm-hmm. some stuff, mm-hmm. and I just see what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He was pounding out chicken, talking to a sales <laughs> rep. Phone was over in the corner. He's like, "Oh yeah, we're on Facebook Live, bro." Yeah, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm like, you're you're you've been killing it." You know, this is what. And, what and three days ago was his ten year anniversary, no, right? Yesterday was it yesterday? Because was that? God, that was yesterday. Because he you. since he dropped some pictures. I wish we could have. He's he's one of the guys that that I <laughs> that texts me or we talk daily. He's he's one of the guys. I sent him. We sent him a coat for his anniversary. Oh, dude, that's so sweet. Yeah, and then he's like, "Hey, po- send me the post uh, that we did our sales post today," and and he reposted it for us and stuff. Yeah, because so. he's. I mean, I never even thought about that. I've been so wrapped up in my own world. I, I think I like he. He still rocks the skills shirt. And he loves the ticket time. I mean, he's just such a. He mm-hmm. loves. You know what? I mean, he wears everybody's stuff, and he and like that post. I don't. Do you remember? It was a couple of weeks ago where he hit. He tagged you. He tagged. Uh, oh. He tagged like that's passion, like goat cape, uh, goat cape. Goat cape. Yep. He he ta- of course ta- he tagged True Cooks. He tagged me. Yep. He tagged. Um, I think that was it. it was like mm-hmm. four or five of us. Right. And he's like, these guys are still killing it. You know, like these guys yep. are chefs in the business, dude. That's just it's an, that's just you. You can't pay the, for that. That's the people that I want to be associated with. Yeah. That's why I like when I finally you know as we're coming out and you know. As we're starting to find our new normal, mm-hmm. I'm like, I saw that and I was like, that's why I do this. Yeah, that's why. It's friendship, man. Like, yeah. Why for am sure. I? Why am I? Why do I have a friend in Myrtle Beach, in a in a strip mall? Right. Yes. Like, why am I such good friends with him? I mean, when we had our first year anniversary, that guy flew out to our to Huntington Beach. To celebrate our first year, my 40th birthday and our first year anniversary, or second, yeah. I mean, we had people coming in from Ohio. Chef Patrick, uh, we, his, his handle is Chef Beeve. Mm-hmm. Um, 
We had people coming from Chicago. I mean, we had people flying out to us to celebrate our one-year anniversary. Unreal. Like, it, it, and it still blows my mind. And I think maybe that's some of my inspiration as well. Is that would have to be inspiration. Come on. You, you, people are paying 1000 bucks To come and see you and celebrate. To your, come and say congratulations. Just because. Just yeah, I'm just gonna come and say congrats, dude. I can. <laughs> yeah. I can, can you? Ima- I mean, can, can you imagine yeah. that? Spe- hey, I know I gotta go. Where are you going? I got a friend of mine mm-hmm. running a Chefco company. It's his year anniversary. I'm sorry, what? It's not his. He's, is he? He's getting married. You're going to <laughs> yeah. his wedding? No, 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 no. It's his birthday, yeah. and is it wait, second year anniversary for his company? Yeah. And you're gonna fly out there. That's when you know. I wouldn't say that you wouldn't know if you made it from a business standpoint. That's when you know that you're on the right track. I think uh, several times inside my journey Mm -hmm. of what I want, where I'm going, you know when you're off track a little bit Mm -hmm. or when you're way off track. Mm -hmm. And then you know what that feels like, right? You're like, this is not not where I'm supposed to be. But the work that gets you back on track and then that feeling when – you get a DM, a message, or a text from somebody, and they're like, "Dude, thanks so you know, thanks for that." Or uh, they're just a question. That's when you're like, "This is what I'm supposed to do." Right? Yeah. That's 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 how I find my inspiration. Or you know, through talks like this, and really kind of every struggle that I've had, you've had it either in one form, fashion, or another, or tenfold. Mm-hmm. Right? Like mm-hmm. we both have had you know, the ups and downs. But brother, you're like. You're running your own business. This isn't a side hustle for you. Like this is right. this is full on. If you don't sell a coat, I don't. I might, don't, I, I might you, not get paid. You might not get paid. Yeah, that's, that's that's the truth. It's this was never, never ever a hobby, right? Because sometimes you know, after three years, if you're not making money, like it, it's just a hobby. It's it's a side hustle, like you said. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't have that. I couldn't. No, you. You you quit your job. Yeah, I, you I, you created the world where it wasn't going to be a side yeah. hustle. And I think and like, that's I, I awesome. think anybody can. Like I quit my job to go into fashion, okay, and open a embroidery company as well. Yep. How hard could that be? Holy shit! It people say you're living the dream, and then I I I, I tell them, well, I don't know what kind of dream you think <laughs> it is, you know. But it, in in all, in all actuality, I I am doing. I'm living a great life. Yeah, you're, you're definitely, you're doing it right, but you're a success story. I mean, like, you know, there's, I'll, I'll share a story that Carlos shared with me not too long ago. And I think it was like, um, we recently, because like our stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell it from a backstory. Like ECO has been around since 2010. A lot mm-hmm. of people know about it. A lot of people don't. But when we first started launching shirts, there was only one or two people out there. And it wasn't the people that are out there now. Mm-hmm. That's a that's the solid truth. You can say that some people say they're the original, but like, I know when we started, I know how much research I did. Yeah. I know who I was competing against. Sure. And I know that the people that are in the game now were definitely not in the game then. Mm-hmm. And then as you know, and I'm always you know I'm looking and stuff, and I'm like, and you always want certain things for your business, and. You see people do stuff, and there's some people that are killing the game. They're making some really great designs, and I like where their head's at, and I like I like it looking at it. Some mm-hmm. of the stuff I wouldn't wear because it's not my style. Right. Some of the stuff I would love to wear. There was a woman that came on your truck, and it was like you told me the story right around, and, and Gina and I were on the truck, and you're like, so you and Jennifer are on the truck. And she gets on this car. She gets on your thing, and she's like, oh, my friend. Oh, my God, I love this story. Give me five. <laughs> you, you don't think I listen to you, this right? This is good stuff. This yeah. was a good time. Yes. You, you go, this lady gets on my car, and she gets on, well, this is a food truck that's designed as a tailor shop that has these legit bomb-ass chef coats. And she's like, oh, my God. Um, my friend, she's not a chef. She's not going to buy a coat. She just saw it, right? And right. she's, or she might have been a chef. She she works for a a, main, uh, a broadline distributor. Broadline distributor. She saw your coat, and she's like, "My friend wants to start a chef coat company. Can I take pictures of your stuff, right? Of your coats, mm-hmm. and send it to her, right? And your sister about threw her off the truck, right? She's she, like, she, she was <laughs> like, "I'm a, I'm a, no, you can't do that." And you're yeah. like, "Listen, you want to do this? 
Go ahead. Take all the pictures you want. Take take the coats. Like you want, like just go. Yeah. You want here? You can buy them. I'll give you a twenty five percent off coupon right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that was actually Jennifer. Jen, she walked. She came on the truck and was like, "Hey, I'm gonna buy a coat because my friend's designing coats now." And and then she's like, oh, "Hold on, let me go finish with my customer." Mm-hmm. So she walked off the truck, and I told my sister, "Let's go." And she's like, "Why?" We were in Encino, and it was during <laughs> summer, and it was probably a thousand degrees, and it was a long day, and. I was like, let's just go. Like, I'm not going to let her take pictures or buy a coat because then they're going to steal from us. And then Jennifer was the one that said, okay, what? You think this is easy? You like this? Like, let her. <laughs> let her. Like, let her. Like, let her have the opportunity. What we have done over the past a year and a half, two years, has not been all rainbows. No. You know? So it's definitely. And bi- all businesses that are worth it are not rainbows. Well, nothing. There, there definitely are times where you have a, a million dollar idea and it flies off the, the rack and and you just make it. Oh man! But not all good ideas make it. No, like you just have to stay persistent, right? Not all good I- ideas will make it, but you're like you've done a, you, you've done really good for yourself, and I just, I mean, I know that we keep saying that. But, like, there's so many people that have ideas out there. And now, in this era, mm-hmm. because, like, if you really think about it, when we decided to create these other opportunities for ourselves mm-hmm. um, at different levels, here definitely at a different level than I would consider what I'm doing mm-hmm. at a different level, because there's all, there's all levels, right? Absolutely. That was, that's definitely out of the norm. We were definitely not the normal person. But now with Instagram, mm-hmm. Snap, Facebook, you know, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody's trying to find a startup. And even the chefs, like you get, you know, 30,000 fans on Instagram, you're a legit chef. Right. But can you run a restaurant? Right. You might okay. be able to take an awesome, awesome picture, picture of a sure. sandwich. You might be able to make that plate look legit. But what does it taste like? And the proof has to be in the pudding sooner or later. Of course. I mean, doing what I do, our life expectancy on a coat is about six to seven months on a regular chef that's working regular hours. Okay? Okay. What we have found is that a chef will buy about between four to nine coats a year. One guy. Okay? But what we also have found is that some of these 20,000 follower chefs are in, will call and be like, hey, I need a new coat. Okay. But I need it with this new logo. Why? Because I'm at a new restaurant now. You just started working three months ago, four months ago at that other place. And they're job hoppers, you know, either uh, to get the yeah. pedigree, mm-hmm. which is good for business. But, like, I can't tell you how bad that is for your reputation. Right. You know? Right. I mean, there's people that have, I think since we have started, have had 12 different jobs in three and a half years. You're not looked at as, you're looked at as a photographer. Somebody who could take a great do, picture. Do you think that other chefs pick up on it? Or do you, like, okay, because I, I feel like there's... I would. Yeah. If I was cooking and I was looking at your... You were here, you were here, you were here, you were here. You were, yeah, but you're 20 years deep. You're OG. You're a vet. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if you're... Because there's a gap, right? There's us. Absolutely. Like, there's a us. Big gap. 20 yes. years. Mm-hmm. Then there's like the 12 to 15 years. Mm-hmm. Then you've got like maybe let's say five years in mm-hmm. and you're... Instagram killing it. Maybe that decade end, you're not as profound on the social. But the three year cook mm-hmm. is looking up at that. He's like, I've only got two thousand followers. You Stop know? it. And like and Stop you, looking. Right. I think Stop it. Like it's cool to watch and get inspiration through cool pictures, but stop trying to be. Like stop trying to like get your followers. Stop just like cook. Let's just go let's just cook. Okay. And then because I can't take our followers to the bank and be like, oh, hi, I have this many followers on my Facebook and this many followers <laughs> on, on my Instagram. Oh, I know. Can I get some money for this? Like, no, it'll come. Like, mm-hmm. everything will come. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, you're not, it's not like you're not trying hard enough, but let's focus on the plate. Let's focus on cooking tonight. And then when you're on your break or at the end of the shift or when mm-hmm. you're plating up to mm-hmm. show the servers what this dish is looking for, take a picture. You know, right? But stop trying to chase 
something that that it's it's attainable, but it's not going to do you any good. You know, it's it's not your how hard you work will, and your reputation will always precede you. When you walk into a restaurant, they should already know that who you are, where you were, and mm -hmm. it's not based off of the the Instagram. You know, thirty seconds. Now I'm sixty seconds. Now I'm a minute, two minutes. Now I'm you know taking time to edit the post. Now I'm taking time to actually like type in what it was and blah blah blah. Shut up. Right. I love it. Because you can't do that <laughs> 700 times in two and a half hours. You can't do that 3,000 times for a breakfast shift. Right? right? Mm -hmm. So take up like Kevin Levine, perfect example. His, plates up, his plate ups are really nice. But sometimes when he takes pictures, Kevin, I love you. And, and I know we've already talked about this. But <laughs> sometimes he takes pictures and I'm like, Whoa. Delete that picture, right? <laughs> but he doesn't. And the reason why is because that's real. You go into his restaurant, and he's busy as yeah. F. Yeah, no. And, you know, he, he, he's, that's a chef. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not the highlight reel that you're after. That's real legit. It's, real, it's the real thing. Yeah. And social I, media is so big right now, and, and I get it. And you might feel like you could pat yourself on the back and be like, yo, I'm, I'm popular. I got 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 followers and stuff. But, okay. What does it mean? How, what do you what do you stand how for? How much how much how much of that forty thousand followers have actually been into your restaurant that actually pay for that dish mm -hmm. that can get you a raise? You know? Boom. Don't don't chase the 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 raise, I always say, chase the promotion. That I've always I've always thought that. You don't look for You dropping some good ones tonight. Yeah, you're like don't chase the raise, chase the promotion. You got to. Like don't go for that that dollar raise or fifty cent raise or whatever it is now in the industry, right? Mm hmm Like work your butt off to get that promotion. And don't work your butt off taking pictures so that you can have this this fictitious view of what you look like. Like, you know, an online um resume, I guess, of pictures. Kind of cool, I guess, but if you can't provide that and run a kitchen because you weren't paying attention, then Boom. you're you're gone. Six months, you're fired. Done. You know? Yeah, you're on to the next one, and not in a good way. You have met thousands of chefs, mm -hmm. eaten in thousands of restaurants all, all across the country. Yes, and probably, and I, 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 Without a doubt, I'm wildly jealous of how many restaurants you get to go to and try because that's <laughs> the one thing I think chefs struggle with the most is getting a day off and going to a restaurant and and getting a chance to eat because mm -hmm. as soon as you get a day off, you probably got to catch up on family stuff and all that. Now, one of the questions that I ask always is if you were to eat at any restaurant at any time with any chef, who would you eat with? Now, this is any chef that you've ever met or known or heard of. And what restaurant would you guys you go to? You put him in a bad to? spot because I got a lot of cool chef friends. Right. No, no, no. This is, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I could say you. Oh, that's true. But that's, um, that's probably. If I could eat a, with any chef, I would probably eat with my, with my good buddy, Marco Zapian. Okay. Yeah. Now, where would you guys eat dinner? <sighs> Fuck. I, I would. T that's another one. I, I would fly. We would fly to Miami. Okay. And we would go to Yardbird and eat with Chef Elliot Gonzalez because he is a, a, a Puerto Rican amazing chef mm -hmm. that treats you like when you walk in this restaurant that you're not like you're not at my restaurant. Like this guy, you, sit down, sit down, no menu. And then it is carte blanche. Just try this. It's not on the menu. Try this. What do you think? I'm making this. Boom, boom, boom. Plus, the food is fantastic. I mean, they, he makes fantastic fried chicken. Yeah, that's that's whatever. Like one, um, they just opened one up in L.A. I'm on my way over there. Oh, are you really? Yeah. I, my um, my old stomping grounds was Miami. Mm -hmm. I was I worked at the American Airlines Arena. I got an NBA ring to prove it. But my one of the really talented chefs I worked with, nice John Nicely. Um, I think he's a regional now, mm -hmm. and he has several properties. But when Yardbird opened. He let me know about it. And he's like, these boys are cooking some fried chicken. Like, nobody's business. Yeah. Like, he told me, and like, I mean, I had friends that, you know, uh, George that worked for us. He was the exec at uh, Marlins. Mm. And he talked about it. I haven't made it back. I've made it back to Miami for family stuff mm -hmm. or Fort Lauderdale. But I haven't made it back to do 
a restaurant tour. Well, that's, I, like Yardbird would be one on the list for sure. Oh my gosh, that's that's an awesome thing. I would tell you three or four. Like it's it's killer. I mean, we just came back from. I took the, we took the staff to uh, the place a place called the Henry. My mm -hmm. friend Brendan uh, Ayers, he runs the one in Phoenix, and they just opened up one in West or in Beverly Hills area. That place is killer. I mean, you're gonna it's it's kind of pricey, but you're there's, getting there's, you're getting it. Yeah. We just did a tour of an amazing movie place that I'll, I'll share with you when we when we wrap up that mm -hmm. you have to check out. It was just the the bartender, the, the, was just the the guy that has done all the mixology. Totally off the subject, but uh, I'll get you the content. Mm -hmm. You gotta go. Um, now you're having dinner with Marco Zapian, which I totally love. That guy. He's always been a supporter of us since yeah. I've been here. One and, of my best friends for sure. And you're eating at Yardbird, and this is a nice dinner. You've got. Three beautiful kids. You've got a successful business. You find inspiration in others. Now, as we kind of wrap it up on mm -hmm. Leave It on the Line, there's uh, for those of you who don't know, like you're not gonna, you don't have to call anybody out, but uh, you will be. Um, it, the responsibility of being invited on the podcast is to find the next person. I can't wait to to get that off your list. Got him. Got him just like that. Got him. And then as we wrap up. Yep. And it's time for you to leave it on the line, if you will. Mm -hmm. What would you tell people out there that represents Lost Car Chef Apparel, mm -hmm. Carlos, and just a bit of words of wisdom, the last little bit part of the show? You know, we, 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 we preach about Lost Car Army. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why... I. You know, we developed that hashtag. It came from a guy named Joe Bonavita who lives in um, Miami. He's the one who, uh, or Florida. But he's the one that gave us that. So I would think that, you know, to be, what, what, what you guys do, okay, what you guys do in the kitchen, it's not easy work. It's hard work, you know. I, I wouldn't really associate it to actually being out in the field and shooting guns at each other, and you know, because that's heroic you know, our, our military service. But what we do is we go to war every more, every day. Some of you guys are, you guys go to war every day. You know, you start early, you end late, you're on your feet, you're not seeing your family. And I think the people that represent us best is that, is it's not the people that are necessarily buying the $100 apron that don't want to chop too fast because they don't want to get splashes on their $100 apron. Like, put that down. You know, turn that into a cape and put a regular apron on. Let's go. You know, it's the people that are wearing our stuff that are, are getting beat up, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you're getting shot at, getting all the tickets, and the machine doesn't stop, and it's like, boom, 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 and, and you're getting shot at, you know? It, it really, you, you, we're not in the military. Maybe you, you have been, but <coughs> I think for, for us and the thing that we respect the most are the people that are actually just busting it out every day grinding because there's millions of us. There's millions of you guys that are out there that are just, you know, you got to make a living. You're, you're, you got your girlfriend pregnant, and you had to go from being a server to a, a cook, you know, and that is who, like, I represent. Like, call me. Call me. You could call me. You could talk to me because I, I will always pick up my phone. And, you know, that's the brand that we are building. It's the Lost Car Army, and... People might not understand it, but there's a lot of people that do. Do, I love it. Yeah, Carlos, man, this is one of my favorite podcasts <laughs> I've done so far. Thank you so much for driving all the way from Malibu on yeah. a crazy busy day. Well, thank you Sitting for having down me. with me and just kind of rapping. Yeah, and we'll have to do it again soon, man. I'd love to. All right, guys, it's another episode of Leave It on the Line. I am Chef JoJo with Extreme Culinary Outfitters, also a.k.a. ECO. We got Carlos here from Lost Car Chef Coat Apparel, and it's one of the baddest-ass chef coats you could possibly wear. It's what we wear. Um, and I tell you what, this. thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Carlos. All right. That's good stuff, bud.